So here's the problem. You're on Amazon, you're looking for a worm composting bin you can have inside under your sink. Maybe you want to feed the food scraps to the little worms, make some valuable compost for your garden. But when you're looking online, there are a bunch of options, but they all have this one gaping flaw. I mean, literally, they have giant gaps in them. Gap, gap, gap. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but worm compost, it's made up of a bunch of more things than just worms. In fact, there's this entire microscopic universe of creatures that are all running around in there, doing their part to help the composting process. And in fact, when I first saw this ecosystem with my own eyes, I was inspired to share this experience with the world, and thus, MicroSafari was born. If you'd like to learn more, check us out at microsafari.org. Now, the fact that these composters have gaps mean that these little creatures can just run out of your compost bin and into your house. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want a bunch of tiny little bugs running all over my house. Moreover, this means that if creatures that are supposed to be in your compost bin can just run out of it, the creatures that are outside your compost bin that are not supposed to get into it can just waltz right in. So the main examples being cockroaches and fruit flies. No, thank you. I've been vermicomposting for eight years now, and both of these things have happened to me. I used to own one of those online worm composters, and a big mama cockroach just wandered into it, laid a bunch of eggs, and then suddenly, oh look, a bunch of little babies are everywhere. Now thankfully, that compost bin was such an absolute paradise for these cockroaches that they didn't want to leave, and it gave me enough time to seal the entire thing shut with saran wrap, take it to the middle of the desert, and then just dump the whole thing out. But the good news for us is that it is super easy to make your own indoor worm composting bin with barely any materials. You can do it super cheaply, and most importantly, you can do it without there being any gaps in it. And here it is. Now I know it doesn't look super pretty, but what does it matter? It's gonna be hiding under your sink anyway. Out of sight, out of mind, right? Since this composter is transparent, you can actually look inside of it to see the condition of how the compost is doing. You don't have to open the surprise lid and see Surprise, bunch of cockroaches in it. Also, you'll notice that when the worms get really hungry, they'll actually go and crawl up the sides of the box so you can see, hey, these guys are getting adventurous, they're looking around for more food, and you know, hey, it's time to give them a little tasty snack or two. And all you need to make it is one of these clear, waterproof storage containers that you can buy from Walmart, Target, whatever department store. And you can tell that it's waterproof because if you look in the lid of it, you can see all this gasketing material all around it that when you press the lid together and you clamp it on, it makes a nice little seal there. So if water can't get into it, that also means that tiny little bugs, which are bigger than water molecules, cannot get out. When you're looking to buy a box, make sure to find one that has as many of these clamping points as possible. The more that you have, the better it will actually seal the gasket. In addition to the box, you'll need some nice breathable fabric and some packing tape. So just like us, the organisms in the composting bin, the worms and the fungi and the tiny little microorganisms, they all need to breathe air, they breathe oxygen. And so that's why those composters you find online, that's why they have the big gaps in there. But we can do one better than that. And that's why we're using this breathable fabric material. So if you look at this under the microscope, you'll see that it's actually made up of a bunch of different little strands of fiber, plastic fibers that interlock and interlace, but they have little holes in them that the air can get through. But these holes are way too small for the creatures to actually be able to get through it. So we're actually using a very special kind of breathable fabric here. So this is called melt blown fabric. Um, and what's special about this is it's actually made of plastic. So that means that the earthworms can't eat out of it. If you used cotton as the breathable fabric, it would actually start decomposing because it's a natural fiber. And then the earthworms would be incentivized to try eating through it because it tastes super good to them. Whereas if you used a synthetic fiber, like I'm showing you here, the earthworms are not gonna be incentivized to try and eat through it because it doesn't taste like anything to them. There's not, it's not food for them. You can tell that you've got the right stuff by looking for these little dimples in it. So these little dimples are from the manufacturing process where they actually have to melt little sections of the, the plastic strands together so that it doesn't just all come apart. You can find this specific kind of fabric in some different kinds of reusable grocery bags. You can also find it in those N95 or KN95 masks. 
Um, and then I've heard that even some types of flower arrangements come with the specific stuff. And then if you're buying your worms online, I can almost guarantee to you they're gonna come in a drawstring bag that is made up of this exact fabric that you want. So if you're in a pinch and you can't find any of the special kind of fabric, you can just use whatever regular old, old t-shirt that you have or something like that. Just make sure that it's a synthetic fiber. So polyester, maybe it's nylon, doesn't matter. Try and breathe through it. If you can easily breathe through it, that means that it'll work fine. And obviously the bugs are not gonna get through that tiny little mesh. So you're gonna go ahead and get started by taking the lid and cutting a circular hole in it. So I like to do this by finding a random household object that's about, I don't know, yay big or so. And taking that, putting it in the center of the, the lid and then tracing around it with a Sharpie so I know where to cut. And then just violently stab through with a knife and cut out the hole with whatever you can. I actually ended up switching to one of my favorite tools to do this called flush cutters. Unfortunately, my camera ran out of battery when I was filming this, so here is a reenactment for you to enjoy. Huge shout out to these nippers, also called flush cutters. They're supposed to be made for cutting electrical wire, but I found them to be actually super useful for cutting all kinds of random things around the home and around the shop. I've actually started buying these in bulk packages to give away as gifts to those that are handy in my life because they're super cheap and like the value to price of these things are like off the charts. I'll put a link in the description to some of these flush cutters. Next, you're gonna take the breathable fabric and you're gonna cut it into a square that is one inch larger on all the edges than that circular hole that we just cut. And then placing the fabric on the top side of the lid, go ahead and just paste it down using that packing tape. This is actually what's gonna you know, hold the packing tape to the lid and it's gonna finish off that seal to make sure that nothing can get out. You may be wondering why there are actually two layers of fabric here. It's because I accidentally burned through one of them with a hot glue gun. At first I was thinking that you may wanna use the hot glue gun to secure down that fabric, but I ended up deciding it's completely unnecessary and prone to errors. If you wanna make sure that those little creatures don't run out of the bin, like if the gasket fails or something like that, go ahead and take some Vaseline and smear it all along this gasket just to make sure there's this extra little barrier that nothing can get out. And I mean, that's basically it. From here, we're just gonna take some cardboard scraps, cut them to be about the right size to fit in your box, and put them in the bottom. So this cardboard is gonna act as a, a little standoff layer to keep the actual compost substrate off of the bottom of the box. So one, one major flaw with this design that I will mention is that any extra water will pool at the bottom. There are no drain holes that this stuff can leak out of. So, you know, if you had drain holes in here, obviously the creatures could just run out of the drain holes. We don't want that. But if you, if you properly care for your, your compost bin, you can regulate the moisture well enough that you don't actually need any extra drainage. Just don't add extra water to the compost bin unless it's super dry. Uh, this isn't like a typical pile compost where you have to water it regularly. The worms and the other creatures somehow manage to like self-regulate the water levels in there for you. And they get most of the water from the food. Anytime that they're consuming sugars and proteins and carbohydrates, all that stuff, they're breaking it down into carbon dioxide and water. So compost actually self-generates water. This is especially true if you live somewhere really humid, you're gonna wanna be really careful that you don't add anything that's way, way too watery. Um, and if you need to, you can always just add some more dry brown, browns, as they say. So right above all of this cardboard, you're gonna wanna go ahead and add the bedding material, also known as browns. So this is essentially like cellulose material. So that can be papers, it can be egg carton, it can be leaf litter, it can be uh, coconut coir, doesn't really matter. I'm not gonna get into what foods are considered browns versus greens in this video because this honestly is a topic that could warrant an entire video in its own right. But I'll go ahead and add a link in the description below to some good resources that I find online for you. And if I do end up making a video, I'll go ahead and link it in the top right corner. And the browns kind of act like dietary fiber acts to humans. So it's an important part of the earthworm's diet and they need it to survive and actually thrive. My favorite is to use coconut coir just because it's super convenient to use and handle. I get my coconut coir from the local hydroponics shop. You can also get it from like a terrarium shop or you can just buy it online in these, these 
dry bricks of it. The day that you're ready to put the worms in there, go ahead and take the browns that you have in there and go ahead and get them nice and damp. So you, you want it to be wet enough to where when you squeeze it with your hand, a couple of drops will, will fall out of it, but you don't want it to be so wet that you know, it's just pouring rain when you're squeezing the water out of it. You want it to be damp, not wet. If you accidentally put too much water in it, go ahead and just add some more dry bedding material. There's really not harm to having to extra bedding material. You, in my, in my experience, you always want to have excess browns to greens. Greens being other food items, so fruits, vegetables, you know, whatever. All right, so we're ready to add our worms into this thing. You can just go ahead and dump them right in and then add in some, give them a little tasty treat. Give them some watermelon, that's their favorite food, maybe some cantaloupe, they'll love it. And that's it, you're done. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and eviscerate that subscribe button because we've got new and exciting content coming out on a regular schedule. I'm talking microscope videos, I'm talking worm compost how-tos, and maybe even some DIY projects thrown in there. All right, see you in the next one.